how we approach mapping because I think it it's important to keep in mind, right? And you can have one way you understand maps with a certain worldview um, that can be helpful and supportive when you're engaging complexity and others that can be less supportive. So um, this first image, like why is there an ant colony here? This is a good example of a complex adaptive system. And so I'd say one thing that's really key to our approach for Kumu is, is having what I'd say is a complexity aware view. So really thinking about the world and a lot of these challenges that we engage in and some of the problems we're trying to shift that these stakeholder networks are a part of as complex systems. And so part of that, right, is this deep belief around you really can't understand the whole by just trying to understand the parts. And so there's a lot of time that we spend with Kumu and helping people to understand how are those parts related to each other and trying to put as much emphasis on the relationships between people or the relationships between aspects of particular problems or challenges as we do on the individual parts. And there's so much in our world and in our tools that reinforce the, like, the elements, the point on the map, rather than the web of connections that a lot of what Kumu is built to do is to really help shift that focus and shift as much on those relationships um, as we do the individual parts. The other two that this complexity worldview does is it brings also in a fair bit of humility in that we're not going to be able to predict right where these systems go. We're not mapping out like this perfect view that we know exactly what this overall system looks like or exactly what this overall stakeholder network looks like. And then we start to try to engage that. It's going to change. Different behavior is going to emerge. And so we really try to have people use Kumu much more in the context of how can it be a sense-making tool? How can it help to provide more shared understanding, more shared awareness? Can it actually start to try to make uh, explicit some of what was implicit before and actually create shared understanding of what are the key stakeholder groups, whose voice is represented, who has more power, who has less power? Um, how do we really create this really full picture so that we can have enough diverse perspectives to really understand some of the challenges that we're grappling with? The other one, too, is like this analogy around gardener versus chess player. And again, especially we're talking less about the systems maps today and more about the stakeholder maps. And I'd say this is more relevant on the system side, but it's really easy to start to map a complex system or a complex challenge and go into like chess player mode and feel like, hey, I'm going to map out every single piece where I know this perfectly. And if I like move here, here and here, we're going to be done problem solved. And we really try to shift people more towards this analogy of, a gardener of thinking about how do we cultivate, how do we tend to the health of the soil? What is the system's health? How do we actually support this emergence and pay attention to how context again is continuing to change as we start to move, as we start to engage? And so can these maps be living, breathing, continually updating sources instead of something that you kind of generate once and then you let go stale or that you trust so blindly that you're not using it as a tool to actually be in dialogue with these communities, with, with um, participants to find out and say, what's missing? What have we not represented well? Where, like, where, if we think this is how systems change is gonna happen, what's your perspective? What might be, we be missing? And so you can create a, you can have a very similar map and depending if you have this metaphor of kind of gardener or chess player, you can end up using it in very different ways. And so wanted to set some of that um, kind of values-based theoretical underpinning um, as we dive in. When we think about kind of how people are using Kumu, and especially even when people say like, I'm using Kumu to do systems map, or I'm using Kumu to do systems change. We usually see people do one of two paths. So this left path is what I'd call the like ecosystem mapping or stakeholder mapping. So this side is, is really thinking about, hey, the best way that I can understand my system is by better understanding the actors that are involved in that system and the relationships between them. And those relationships might look very different, right? One ecosystem map might be very focused on how do we understand the emerging collaborations and projects that are coming out in relation to the specific problem or challenge I'm facing. And so some of the points on the map might be organizations and other points might be projects and you have a web based on who are the collaborators on those projects. Other times, right, it's a little bit more higher level and theoretical, so, or not theoretical, but a little bit higher level in that this one on the left side is actually a map of all of the stakeholder groups in the birth to eight ecosystem. So looking at early childhood and saying, what are these meta categories? And within each of these meta categories, what are the relationships that we're starting to see across these categories? And what stakeholder groups are currently collaborating? Where might we want to create new 
collaborations and really doing this understanding of like, is this system healthy? Can this be a guide to help people look at, do you have these connections in your systems? Do you actually have these people where, where they are connected? They know someone in one of these other sectors. And so there's a lot of different ways that, this, that the stakeholder map can be approached. And it really comes down to asking good questions, um, really having a target to say, hey, what's most important for us to understand? What information do we need to collect to be able to try to answer that question? Um, and then we can go into what that data set looks like. The right side is, is like people would also refer to it as a systems map. It's probably more, it's more technically accurate to refer to it as a causal loop diagram, but this one's really looking more at trying to understand cause and effect, right? So each of the circles are actually a variable that may increase or decrease. And you're trying to say, hey, as this factor increases, there's this causal co connection to another area in the map. And the goal here, right, is to be able to capture and identify how are all these different parts of the system interconnected. There are times where both of these will come together or where people will try to do a little bit of both. Um, they might identify leverage points on the right side and then start to map stakeholders around them. But normally when we see people come in, even with the term of like, I'm gonna create a systems map, they're actually meaning one of these two different paths. And I'll give you a couple more specific pictures of what this looks like. So this is again, an example of how you'd imagine a project that was really focused more around this, what is this collaboration ecosystem? So this was an example similar around early childhood in Colorado around trying to figure out what are those projects, who's connected and who are the key people as a result. So really try to create a more healthy web. Um, and then these are, this is if we were to double click on the areas of the one on the left side I showed you before. So you can see professional roles and social services is a pretty big, large category. And within it is things like caseworkers, school-based workers, community-based workers. Um, we can also do more of a, uh, what I would say is like the organizational actor level map. And so in this case, this is really about who is collaborating and who has relationships with who. And you'll see, you can start to bring in logos and other aspects as well. Um, but again, a lot of different possibility there on the stakeholder map side. This is a more zoomed in picture of what we mean when we say a causal loop diagram or systems map. So again, right, the, the circles on this map in this case are things like partisan news media or amplification and hardening of partisan views. And so it's a very different type of map. Again, it shares the same similar underpinnings of how do we understand relationships among these different factors, right? And the overall visual might look the same, but it's a very different type of map that people are ending up trying to create um, on the systems map side. Here again is another one. This one's looking at things like housing affordability and what does that do? What's the relationship with policies on housing affordability? How does that feed into cost of living, right? And so this, these can become very large, very big and complex maps. And again, the goal is, can we hold these in such a way that people are using them to better understand and see a problem from many different aspects instead of being able to get like the perfect map that then gives you a prescriptive answer to um, what you might change. And when we think about the, the process for the stakeholder map, right? We'll talk specifically about what the data set might look like, but there are also very different paths around collecting that information. And so the stakeholder map might be much more around who are the key stakeholders, who's involved, um, who's affected by this problem, like who has power, a um, lot of different questions there, and then going deeper and understanding each of the stakeholder groups. And so oftentimes that's done through um, surveys, you can do it through just brainstorms and collecting that information in Excel um, versus the systems map is usually done a little bit more in a workshop mode. And so there's a formal process, people are asking questions to better understand the challenge. They're asking things like, what are some of the key enablers that are in place that are supporting the, our aims that we want? What are the inhibitors? What are some of the things that are blocking us from getting in the way? And then you're going deeper into trying to actually do cause and effect and find out, okay, what's upstream from that? What's upstream from that? Um, so there's a whole process involved in doing that sort of map, but want to make sure you just kind of understand both that kind of theoretical values underpinning and then a good sense of the different types of maps um, that are possible within Kumu.